You think you know your cat's behavior. You feed them. You cuddle them. You buy them the best toys. But biology tells a different, much more complex story. Did you know that over 90% of loving, well-intentioned cat owners accidentally trigger their pet's survival instincts every single day? We aren't talking about obvious neglect like forgetting to fill the water bowl. We are talking about invisible habits, subtle actions you perform without thinking, that cause chronic anxiety and fundamentally damage feline psychology. In the wild, a cat's survival depends on staying hidden, masking pain, and controlling their environment. In your home, when you inadvertently strip away that control, you aren't just hurting their feelings, you are altering their brain chemistry. In this deep dive, we are debunking the nine most common everyday mistakes that ruin your bond, backed by the latest ethological science. We will explore how your perfume acts as sensory warfare, why your playstyle might be causing neurological frustration and why the way you say hello could be the reason your cat feels insecure. And the number one mistake. It is something you probably have in your hand right now. Let's fix this relationship before it becomes a permanent problem. Segment 9. The reunion failure, ignoring them. Let's start with a moment that happens every single day, you walking through the front door. Mistake number nine is ignoring them when you come home. You might think, cats are independent. They don't care if I say hello. This is a massive misconception born from comparing them to dogs. While a dog might jump on you, a cat's need for acknowledgement is just as strong, but it manifests differently. A landmark study from Oregon State University proved that cats form secure attachments to their caregivers remarkably similar to the bond between human infants and parents. When you leave the house, your cat's territory feels incomplete. The resource provider and protector, that's you, is missing. When you return, your cat likely approaches you, maybe rubs against your leg or gives a small chirp. This is a reunion ritual. In the feline world, rubbing sense is how a colony re-establishes trust and confirms that everyone still belongs to the same tribe. If you walk past them to check your mail, look at your phone, or head straight to the kitchen without acknowledging them, you are biologically rejecting their attempt to reintegrate you into the colony. You are breaking the bond. Over time, this creates a state of insecure attachment. The cat learns that their social signals are useless. This leads to behavioural issues like destructive scratching or urinating outside the litter box, not out of spite, but out of anxiety. It doesn't require a 20-minute cuddle session. It just requires acknowledgement. A slow blink, a soft hello, and a gentle stroke on the head are enough to release oxytocin in their brain and tell them, the pack leader is home, the territory is safe, and you are seen. Segment 8. The Predatory Gap the laser pointer paradox. Now let's talk about how we play. Mistake number eight is what behaviorists call the laser pointer paradox. It looks like the perfect toy. You sit on the couch, you flick your wrist, and your cat goes absolutely crazy, sprinting across the room at top speed. It seems like great exercise, right? Physically, yes. Psychologically, it can be a disaster. To understand why, we have to look at the predatory sequence. In a cat's brain, hunting isn't just running. It is a rigid four-step biological program. Stalk, chase, pounce, kill, and eat. This sequence is driven by dopamine. The stalk and chase build up massive anticipation and excitement. The pounce and kill provide the release, the satisfaction of capture. The laser pointer provides the stalk and the chase, but the red dot can never be caught. It has no texture, no smell, and no mass. Under their paws, there is nothing. This creates a broken loop in the dopamine cycle. The cat builds up all this predatory energy, but never gets the chemical release of the kill. Imagine working a grueling 40-hour week, and at the end of the month, your boss just smiles and says, great job, but never gives you a paycheck. That frustration is exactly what your cat feels. Cats that are played with exclusively using lasers often develop neurotic behaviours. They might start chasing light reflections from your watch or phone, 
obsessively staring at shadows, or even becoming aggressive toward other pets because they need to direct that pent-up frustration somewhere. You don't have to throw away the laser, but you must change how you use it. Use the laser to guide them toward a physical toy, a stuffed mouse or a feather wand. Let them catch that physical object, or, immediately after the laser session, give them a high-value treat. This completes the cycle. They hunted, and now they eat. This closes the biological loop and leaves your cat satisfied, not stressed. Segment 7. Sensory Overload, Touching the Wrong Zones Mistake number 7 is assuming your cat enjoys being touched the same way a dog or a human does. This is ignoring petting thresholds. We have all been there. Your cat rolls over on the rug, exposing that fluffy, soft belly. It looks like an invitation. You reach down to rub it and snap. Claws and teeth are wrapped around your hand. You think your cat is being mean or moody. Biologically, they are just protecting their vital organs. In the wild, the stomach is the most vulnerable part of a cat's body. It houses all their critical organs and has no skeletal protection. When a cat exposes their belly to you, it is indeed a sign of massive trust. They are saying, I feel safe enough to be vulnerable. But when you touch it, you trigger a primal defensive reflex. It's an instinctive reaction, not a conscious decision to hurt you. Furthermore, many cats suffer from a condition called feline hyperesthesia or are simply easily overstimulated. The base of the tail and the lower back are packed with nerve endings. While some cats enjoy scratches there, for many, repetitive stroking in this area quickly turns from pleasant to painful. It's like being tickled. It starts funny, but after 30 seconds it becomes unbearable. If you see the skin on their back twitching, a reaction called the cutaneous trunchy reflex, their tail swishing or their ears turning back, stop immediately. Stick to the green zones, the cheeks, the chin and the base of the ears. These areas contain scent glands. When you scratch them there, the cat isn't just feeling pleasure, they are marking you with their scent, reinforcing the bond. Respect the no signals, and you will raise a cat that trusts your hands, rather than fearing them. Segment 6. Territorial Invasion. Safe Zones. Mistake number 6 destroys your cat's sense of security, disrespecting safe zones. Cats are both predators and prey. This duality dictates their entire relationship with space. To feel secure, a cat needs to know they have a retreat, a bunker where they are invisible and untouchable. This could be a spot under the bed, a high perch on a cat tree, or the top of a wardrobe. The mistake happens when we violate these spaces. Maybe your cat is hiding under the bed because there are guests or a thunderstorm, or they just want to sleep. If you reach in, drag them out, or try to force them to socialize, you are destroying the sanctity of their core territory. You are teaching them that there is no place in the house where they are truly safe from you. This is particularly damaging when they are sleeping. Sleep is a state of total vulnerability. If you constantly wake them up to cuddle or move them because you want to sit in that chair, you create a state of hypervigilance. A cat that cannot sleep deeply because they are waiting to be disturbed will have chronically elevated cortisol levels. Establish a strict rule in your household. If the cat is in their safe spot, the cat tree, the box, the specific corner, they are invisible. Do not touch them. Do not look at them. Do not talk to them. Let them come to you. By giving them the autonomy to retreat, you actually make them more social because they know they have an escape route if things get overwhelming. Segment 5. The Association Gap Punishment We are down to the most critical errors. Mistake number five is perhaps the most damaging to the human-animal bond. Punishment. Spraying water, shouting or physical discipline when they scratch the sofa or jump on the counter. Science tells us clearly, it does not work. Here is the neurological reason why. Cats lack the prefrontal cortex development to understand wait-and-see causality. They do not link your anger now with the action they did 30 seconds ago. If you come home and find vomit or a mess and you yell at the cat, they have zero concept that you are yelling about the mess. 
They just see their owner acting aggressively and unpredictably. Even if you catch them in the act, say, spraying them with water while they scratch the couch, they don't learn scratching the couch is bad. They learn scratching the couch while the human is watching is dangerous. They will simply wait for you to leave the room to do it again. Worse, you are conditioning them to fear you. You become a source of stress, not a source of safety. You cannot punish a behavior out of a cat. You can only prioritize a better option. This is called redirection. Scratching the sofa. Place a sisal post right next to the sofa. Cover the sofa spot with double-sided tape, which they hate, and rub catnip on the post. When they use the post, reward them. You are hacking their brain to prefer the good object. It's simple biology. Rewarding the behavior you want is 100% more effective than punishing the one you don't. Segment 4. Acoustic Stress. Loud Noises. Mistake number four is failing to understand their superpower, hearing. A human can hear up to about 20,000 hertz. A dog, about 45,000 hertz. A cat, they can hear up to 64,000 hertz. They can hear the electricity humming in your walls. They can hear a mouse heartbeat from three rooms away. Their ears are satellite dishes designed to detect the tiniest movements of prey. Now, imagine taking those hypersensitive satellite dishes and placing them next to a subwoofer, or a screaming argument, or a slamming door. What is loud to you is essentially an explosion to them. Constant loud noise triggers the startle reflex and keeps the cat in a permanent state of fight or flight. We often think, oh, he'll get used to it. But studies show that cats living in chaotic, loud environments often suffer from stress-induced cystitis, bladder inflammation, and over-grooming. They literally lick their fur off to soothe the anxiety caused by noise. You don't have to live in a library, but be mindful. Don't blast the TV. If you're using a blender or vacuum, put the cat in another room first. And never, ever yell as a way to communicate. A soft, quiet voice is much more commanding to a cat than a shout, which they interpret purely as aggression. Segment 3, The Language Barrier, Ignoring Communication Mistake number three is ignoring their attempts at communication. Here is a fascinating fact. Adult cats in the wild almost never meow at each other. They communicate through scent and body language. Meowing is a pigeon language they evolved specifically to talk to us humans. They figured out that we are deaf to their scent signals, so they use vocalizations to get our attention. When your cat meows at you, chirps or trills, they are making a deliberate effort to bridge the species gap. They are saying, I need something, I'm bored, or I missed you. If you constantly ignore these vocalizations, or worse, shout at them to be quiet, you are teaching them learned helplessness. The cat learns that communication is futile. This leads to a withdrawn, depressed cat who stops trying to interact with you. Or, on the flip side, it leads to more annoying behavior. Like a child, if asking nicely doesn't work, they will start screaming. Many loud cats are just cats that had to escalate their volume because their owners ignored the polite requests. Talk back. It sounds silly, but it works. If they meow, answer them. Check what they might need. Is the water bowl empty? Is the litter box dirty? Do they want to play? By responding, you validate their effort to communicate, deepening the bond. Segment 2. Forced Socialization, the Consent Model Mistake number two is common among owners who want a friendly cat. It is forcing socialization. Your friend comes over. You want to show them how cute Fluffy is. Fluffy is hiding. You go find Fluffy, pick her up, and thrust her into your friend's arms. Fluffy scratches your friend and runs away. You have just utilized a technique called flooding, and it is psychologically damaging. Cats are control freaks. They evaluate risk based on distance and scent. When you pick them up and hand them to a stranger who smells weird and moves differently, you remove their ability to escape. This creates panic. Every time you force an interaction, you are actually confirming their suspicion that strangers are dangerous. You are making them less social, not more. Use the consent model. Give your guest a high-value treat. 
Have them sit on the couch and ignore the cat. Let the cat approach at their own pace to sniff. If the cat engages, great. If not, let them be. Curiosity is a cat's strongest trait. If you give them space, their curiosity will eventually outweigh their fear. But it must be their choice. Segment 1. Sensory Warfare, Scent and the Jacobson's Organ And finally, the number one invisible mistake. This is the one you probably do without thinking, yet it affects your cat's entire reality. Overpowering Odors Humans differ from cats primarily in how we perceive reality. We are visual. Cats are olfactory. Their world is built on a map of smells. They have a specialized organ called the vomeronasal organ, or Jacobson's organ, located on the roof of their mouth. It allows them to taste scents and detect pheromones, chemical messages that tell them, this is home, this is safe, this is mine. When you use strong plug-in air fresheners, essential oil diffusers, many of which are toxic, like tea tree or peppermint, or highly scented litter, you aren't just making the house smell nice. You are effectively blinding your cat. You are scrubbing away their scent markers. Imagine waking up and finding someone has painted over all the street signs in your neighborhood and replaced them with blinding neon lights. That is what a citrus-scented room feels like to a cat. Even worse, scented litter boxes. We buy them because we don't want to smell waste. But forcing a cat to step into a box that reeks of artificial lavender is like forcing a human to use a portable toilet filled with ammonia. It's repulsive to them. This is the leading cause of litter box avoidance. Go unscented. Use enzymatic cleaners that destroy odors rather than masking them. Let your cat mark their territory with their cheek glands. Your home should smell neutral to you, which means it smells like safety to them. The Cortisol Connection Understanding these nine points isn't about walking on eggshells in your own home. It is about empathy. It is about bridging the gap between primate psychology, us, and feline psychology, them. When you eliminate these stresses, you will see a physical change in your cat. Their coat will get shinier because they are over-grooming less. They will sleep deeper because they aren't hypervigilant. They will engage with you more because you are no longer a source of confusion. You are lowering their cortisol, the stress hormone, and boosting their immune system. By simply respecting their biology, you are likely extending their lifespan. Now I want to hear from you. Which of these mistakes were you making without realizing it? Be honest in the comments. We are all learning here, and your experience might help another cat owner. And if you want to understand the flip side of this coin, if you want to know if your cat really sees you as their parent and feels that chemical bond we talked about, you need to watch this video on the signs of cat imprinting next. It explains the science of how they choose their favorite human. Click right here and I'll see you there.